Gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. So thankful for where you've placed us in our life, for everything that you're doing in our life. We praise you and give you thanks and all the glory. We give you all the glory for everything that you've done in our lives, that your work is sufficient, that you love us with an everlasting love, that you've forgiven us of all our of our sins, uh, all of our sins, past, present, and future. You buried them in the depths of the sea to be remembered no more. We, we just give you all the praise and glory, uh, Father, for the instruction that you're giving us. I ask that you would filter out all of that, which is not of you. Knowing that you guide us into all truth, just filter out the foolishness, but seal to our hearts truth, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying together in the uh, first epistle of John. We're in the second chapter. And we're coming up on a verse that if they had remained with us, they would have been of us, but they departed and left and went out away from us to show that they were not of us. And I just want to tell you what that does not mean. That does not mean you're walking along a country road with a brother in the Lord and you two disagree on water baptism and one of you uh, leaves the other or you both part ways and so you have went out from among each other. It's not, it's not what it means. It does not mean that you're in church, you're going to First Baptist Church and you leave First Baptist Church and you go to Second Baptist Church and so the First Baptist Church looks at you and says, well they went out from among us so, so therefore they must not be of us. That's not what it means. And of course, you can go on with that. You know, you, you don't, you're not happy with the second Baptist church, so you go to the third Baptist church and you leave that too, and so you're not of them. That word there, uh, not of us, that the word is ek, out of in the Greek, it's, it's origin. They didn't originate from us. If, if they don't remain with us, they didn't originate from us. And I just want you to simply understand that the context here that we're beginning to look at here is the spirit of the Antichrist. This is, these are those who say that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh, that he wasn't God of very God, that there was no Messiah. And that takes us back to Hebrews chapter 10, where that we know by reading that, since we understand that we are not Hebrews, and we're looking at that book in context, in context, that there was a reason why the Holy Spirit was pointing out to Hebrews early in, in the beginning, at the beginning of the church, that there was the danger of, of not under, uh, realizing that Christ Jesus himself was the true Messiah and that there was not a, going to be another Messiah come. And if, you, and if they continued sinning willfully, that is rejecting the Messiah, there no longer remained a sacrifice for sins, but a certain terrifying expectation of judgment which would consume the adversaries. And that scares a lot of Christians, but it shouldn't. Because you're looking at someone just like you're looking at here in the first uh, epistle, uh, second chapter of John in our present study. These are those who went out from among us because they didn't believe that... Uh, well, they just didn't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. So it's not talking about you leaving your church and going to another church and then wondering if you were one of those who had not remained with your church, therefore you, you went out from among them, therefore you weren't of them or you weren't of the Lord. And the same is true with a brother, whether it's on an individual basis, whether it's we're talking about a church, whether we're, we're talking about a a denomination, uh, well, you know, I left the Baptists, I went to the Church of Christ, so that's not what it's talking about. We've got to keep things in context, dearly beloved. We read in Hebrews, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And Christians read that and they think, oh my gosh, 
I might be in really big trouble because I can't stop sinning. You know, I can't clean up that old man. I can't clean up the flesh. I'm not reckoning myself dead to sin. I'm continuing to sin. And, and dearly beloved, there's not a believer that's ever lived that didn't continue to sin. The context here is sinning willfully. That is going on and not understanding that it is if we, uh, just as the text says, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who shall trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Okay? Uh, you know, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as I'm, I'm going back up to verse 25. This is in chapter 10 of Hebrews. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. It just plugs right into what we're looking at in, in the second chapter of 1 John. They went out from us. They weren't of us. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching, that's what we're trying to do. You know, that, takes us, that took me back to Judas. Um, I don't believe that he was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. Of course, we know that the real Antichrist, when we go forward into the book of Revelation, doesn't believe that either. You know who didn't... Uh, most scholars agree Judas did not know the Lord. They didn't believe that he was the true Messiah. Now he might have thought that the, and many think that he thought that, that Jesus was, at first at least, he thought the Messiah was, that Jesus was the Messiah, but he thought that he came to overthrow them, uh, Romans, who had so oppressed the Jews. And so it was a, more of a political sort of a movement than anything else. And, and when Christ didn't uh, meet those expectations of Judas's, uh, well, then Judas had big problems. And then we go forward into the book of Revelation, and we see that the, the Antichrist, the, which there will be one who comes, the Antichrist himself, will also have that, that, that same spirit of denying that Jesus came in the flesh. And so here we are in 1 John, looking back to Hebrews 10, or that the law was a shadow of good things to come, that there was only going to be one sacrifice, one only. The, the, there was, you know, the writer to the Hebrews was making sure that they understood that there was not going to be another Messiah come, that Jesus was the Messiah, better get on board, otherwise, you know, well, there's just not going to be another Messiah that comes. And so in our present study, you know, this going out from among us, it's, it's not Christians dividing over doctrine. You know, I don't, I don't believe in baptism. You do, so we can't fellowship. Or I don't believe in, in eternal security, and you do, so we can't fellowship. That is not what it's talking about. That's, that's just what I wanted to point out. Back in verse 12, I, I write unto you little children. That's a term of endearment. He's talking to all believers because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake, that is, not because of anything you did, but because of his, for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you've known him that's from the beginning, young men, because you've overcome the wicked one. Uh, folks, in this text, we, are, we, we see that all of our sins have been, are, have been forgiven. God is fully propitiated. He's the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Uh, I talked a little bit about, about that, but uh, we're, the Holy Spirit seems to be putting us on a good, solid foundation of footing here, okay, for everything else that's going to follow. Your sins have been forgiven. You have an advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's just in defending us because his work on the cross was sufficient. We've overcome the wicked one. We're strong uh, because of the word of God that's in us. We're told not to love the world. I mentioned that I believe this is the world religious system based on human merit, that which would put us to death, thinking it's doing God a service. It's not hard, folks, to draw a connection between the life of Jesus and who he, he confronted when he came, when he came unto his own and his own received him not. That, that legal system, and the same is true today. 
We looked at the lust of the flesh. We looked at the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. This is all has to do with the flesh. It goes on and to show that we, we, what abides forever is the new man, the new creation in Christ, the sinless new man, which we're going to see in chapter 3. Little children, it's the last time, the last hour. We've been in that last time ever since Christ came. And as you've heard that Antichrist shall come, that's the Antichrist himself. Even now there are many Antichrists, many. Why are there many? Because there are many who deny the deity of Jesus Christ. There are many who deny, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, they deny that God became man, the almighty, majestic God, creator of heaven and earth, became man and died a substitutionary death in our place. That he was fully God, that he was the true Messiah, that the Old Testament... Uh, foretold, prophesied about, that the Old Testament uh, made clear that would come. And when we go over to Hebrews, we see, amazingly, in chapter 10, we see that, that one of the categories of, of individuals that the Holy Spirit, through the writer of Hebrews, is speaking to are those who continue to sin willfully, that is, they rejected Him, uh, they continued to... to sin willfully after having received a knowledge of the truth. They received a knowledge of the truth in the sense that they understood that Jesus was the Messiah and they turned and walked away. And that is what we're looking at here in our present study in 1 John where they went out up from among us because they were not of us. They didn't originate the word ek out of in the Greek. They didn't originate from us. So we're, we're simply looking at those who deny that Jesus Christ is God. And, and deny the, uh, the work that he did, the person and the work of Jesus Christ. These are the ones that go out from, from us because they didn't originate from us. This is what the text is talking about. So now we're in the, the, the subject or the topic of the Antichrist as well as the spirit of the Antichrist as well as the many Antichrists that there are. And we have received an unction from the Holy One. That is, uh, you've received an anointing. Every single Christian has received an anointing from the Holy Spirit. He'll guide us into all truth. He'll comfort us. This is true of every single believer. This is where we're at in our present study. I suppose it's easy for Christians to, to, to sort of fall into that trap of believing, well, you know, because... I had to leave my church because I didn't believe what my pastor was, was, was saying. And, and so I went out from that church and, and I went to another church or maybe I didn't go to another church at all, but I, I left that church. And, and so they have every right to believe that I went out from among them and, and I'm the subject of this verse. Dearly beloved, I have spoken a lot about the importance of context. Just look at the context. The context, the immediate context is the Antichrist and the many Antichrists. It's the Antichrist system. And what we know from Scripture is, is that this Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, anything that has anything to do with against Christ or in place of Christ is a, is a person or a belief system that believes that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh, that God did not become man and dwell among us. He, did, he wasn't God of very God. He wasn't the all, almighty, majestic God of the creator of heaven and earth. He was not God in the flesh. And all of that that implies, all of that that the incarnation implies, uh, a person doesn't believe that, doesn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Now, I don't care whether you were a Jew, a Hebrew back then, or if you're a Gentile today, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ was fully God, that he came and he died on a cross for our sins, was raised, buried, was buried, raised from the dead, and he lives forevermore. If you don't believe that, then you are, you do have the spirit of the Antichrist. That's what the text is saying. That's the context of this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. And the word out of is, is origin. They didn't originate from us. That's what the text is saying. It's not talking about you and a brother uh, parting ways because you didn't believe what each other believed. It's not talking about you leaving your church uh, because you went out from them, therefore you're not of, you know, the, so you're not a Christian. You know, and, and, and people move from church to church all the time. 
So I just want to make it clear that this is not some scary passage that's talking about if you leave your church that you're not of the Lord. Or if you depart from your brother and, and as far as the difference goes in beliefs that you're not of the Lord. we got to stick with the context. That's what I'm saying. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the, the the corners thereunto uh, perf the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. If you're a believer, you should have no conscience of sins. That's not, that's not, I don't mean to imply that you're saying that you don't have sin, but that uh, there's no condemnation. But in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again made of sins every year. We're looking at Old Testament sacrifices, which had to be repeated every year. This is what the Holy Spirit through the writer of Hebrews is talking about. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. That's, that's the context of Hebrews 10. Uh, let me just make a long story short. If, if we skip down to, to the 10th verse, of Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10:10. 10, 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Je Jesus Christ once for all. I just want to thank you all for your continued interest in these verse by verse studies that I know are sometimes difficult to, to stay up with. We're going to stay the course, continue doing this expository verse by verse with the occasional breakaway to do something prophetic or some other topical uh, subjects, topical study. Uh, I just want to tell you just how much I appreciate everyone who's, uh, who's encouraged us along our journey here at Blessed Hope Forever. We love you, we truly do. We ask for your continued prayers as we are constantly praying for you. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.